Has Carvana dodged a bullet? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Well, Liz, this headline from Automotive News, it appears that may be the case. It reads, debt-laden Carvana narrows losses, this being in first quarter 2023. Yes, for now. Carvana does appear to be able to avoid the doomsday scenario that so many have been predicting. And that's actually good news for the overall car market. Carvana going down would have been hugely disruptive. Very big. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Carvana has made enough progress in cutting its expenses and driving up per vehicle profit in the first quarter. Now the debt-laden retailer must work to sustain its momentum and preserve liquidity. The online used vehicle giant in recent quarters has pumped the brakes on its growth at all costs approach, something it found necessary to do as inflation and rising interest rates converged to disrupt consumers' used vehicle buying habits. Carvana, which also faces steep interest payments each quarter, says it has prioritized initiatives aimed at improving its per-vehicle economics. The shift in strategy was clear in Carvana's report last week. It sold just over 79,000 vehicles in the quarter ended March 31st down 25% from a year earlier as it reduced its net loss by more than 40%. Mm. I'm guessing this past year has been a little tough on the younger Garcia, as recent pictures of him show him going from a dark-haired, young-looking man to showing a fair bit of gray hair. Oh, the prospects of bankruptcy looming overhead can age just about anyone. That's right. After a robust 2021, Carvana expected another similar year, but it ended up being pretty dramatically out of balance with where sales actually were in 2022, CEO Ernie Garcia said during the company's earnings call last week. The retailer's first quarter performance beat several analysts' expectations. It recorded a $286 million net loss, slimmer than the $506 million loss in the year earlier period. Its share price, which fell 98% last year, <laughs> jumped by double digits to $8.96 on Friday, May 5th. For now, Carvana of Tempe, Arizona, appears on track to avoid that doomsday scenario that so many have been predicting, analysts for Piper Sandler wrote in a research note published last week. They noted that the company's aggressive cost-cutting and tighter inventory management in the first quarter boosted its cash flow and staved off bankruptcy concerns. As part of their recovery, if you will, is due in part to their reported per-vehicle profit numbers, Carvana said it captured total vehicle profit of $4,303, up 52% from the year earlier period and ahead of analyst expectations. That actually beats out CarMax reported per vehicle profit numbers of 2,339 per vehicle in the same time frame. Friends, the bottom line is that many of you are spending way too much on cars that you're buying from Carvana. Right. Garcia said, we've already got our plans for the next nine to 12 months to keep the pedal down and keep making a lot of progress on unit economics. We plan to do that at somewhat similar volumes to where we are today. He added, once it achieves that, Carvana will turn its attention back to growth and capturing more market share. Well, best of luck with that. The company did note in a letter to shareholders that some of the factors that led to the improved total per vehicle profit were one time or transitory. For instance, Carvana's retail profit per vehicle, $1,388 benefited from a $47 million retail inventory allowance adjustment. That adjustment is tied to prices rising faster than expected in the first quarter, which allowed Carvana to sell through more of its older retail inventory that it had marked down as not being able to sell in the fourth quarter last year. That boosted retail per vehicle profit by $593, Carvana said. Analysts at J.P. Morgan wrote in a research note last week that Carvana's decision to break or slow down on its growth and focus on improving its per-vehicle expenses and profit led to lower cash burn in the near term and a better-than-expected $24 million loss as measured by adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's amazing that they're measuring success based on lower losses. <laughs> sure. But Carvana's interest burden tied to its long-term debt still leads to a significant drain on liquidity with need to raise capital mid-2024, barring further worsening of the credit and consumer environments in the meantime. By all indications, however, and by many of the recent reports we've seen, there's some rough road ahead for everyone in that regard. Back in just a moment after this message from Mary Jo. Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guy team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications about upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. 
And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? Carvana paid roughly $160 million in interest in the first quarter of 2023. And if the company pays that amount each quarter, it is looking at more than $600 million per year in interest expense alone, said Chris Pierce, a research analyst at Needham & Company. Wow, that's a ton that's of bucks. That's a lot of money. Interest payments can be killer. Higher interest payments are tied in part to a $3.2 billion long-term loan with a 10.25% interest rate that Carvana took out in 2022 Ooh. to pay for Odessa US, the large auction network it acquired from Car Global last May. Ten and a quarter percent on three point two billion. Ouch. That's huge. Carvana listed six point five seven billion in long term debt on its balance sheet at the end of March. Not really sure how smart that was. Yeah. Analysts covering Carvana have long suggested the company needs to rework its debt to make it viable in the long term. The company had previously proposed that its creditors trade debt for asset secured notes. But Bloomberg reported last month that creditors holding about 90% of Carvana's bonds pitched it on a debt for equity swap. Carvana CFO Mark Jenkins said last week that there haven't been changes in the way the company has historically thought about improving liquidity. He said, generally speaking, we favor asset-based or secured financing, of which I think the biggest asset that we have today is real estate, nearly $2 billion of total unpledged real estate assets. A little more than half of that is Odessa real estate locations. In a research note last week, equity analyst Sharon Zakfia at William Blair & Company noted Carvana could bring in cash by monetizing the Odessa U.S. real estate. Bloomberg contributed to this report. I'm going to wrap up with a quick reminder for returning viewers or for the new ones just joining us, thank you, that with regard to the all-new hassle-free car buying process we're launching this year, we've created a Google form to help you sign up for early notification and responses automatically load into a database for us. And that makes our job so much easier. There's a question at the end of the document we'd love to hear your feedback on, so please don't skip it. The final question reads, with regards to the current car buying process, please tell us what you like, don't like, how you view the current car buying process, or any other things you wish to see brought to life with respect to creating the ultimate car buying process that would make you say, now this is how I want to buy a car every time. If you signed up early when we announced this and we asked you to email or text us, you may be getting a message back from me asking you to fill out the short form so I can avoid having to do it myself manually. The link to our form is on our YouTube community page and it's also on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Make sure you go there and fill it out. You're doing a great job of helping us strategically align our launch with your specific wants and needs. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, it's vitally important that you don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future announcements, just as Mary Jo said. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our YouTube family. If you're one of our newest subscribers, we welcome you. Also, thanks to our many faithful followers for coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.